So something that has been used in other countries is a solidarity tax. So, and I really like it because of the wording, solidarity, and people don't often think of taxes as a way to build unity amongst groups, but it's something that's been used in different countries in, at different points of crisis. And it's a way to say, look, we've got to tax the rich a bit more at this point um, because we need to, in Germany's case, we were they were reunifying Germany. In this case, the next generation, <laughs> unless we make huge investments in this po at this point, are going to be in trouble. So um, how about a solidarity tax to the next generation? You know, saying to the people that have managed to make money, um, especially through housing wealth, for instance, right, we're going to just take a tiny bit of this, bring it together, and we're going to invest it in things that will help the next generation. Mm. And are you thinking particularly climate there or are you thinking very kind of society and class? Yeah, I think climate is the most obvious thing. But the beauty of climate investment is that you can do it in a way that also creates a lot of non-graduate jobs. Um, it can also do things like tilt our economic activity to parts of the UK that have been forgotten and um, that haven't had a lot of economic prosperity. I mean, that's the beauty of renewable energy in a sense that it, you don't do it in London. You know, you can tip it away from, from the typical places that economic prosperity has happened. The other big thing, and I talk about this a lot in the book, is care work. Um, underpaid, undervalued, such an important aspect of people's lives, whether it's their children or the, or the women that looked after my own mother. You could invest in a new universal uh, free at the point of use childcare system, high quality, you know, that sort of thing that like will open up so much for this country, which will make society better, but will also make us prosper economically.